So why have an inspection program for wheels and rims? We will look at the basics of why and more at the hazards of working with tires and wheels. The purpose of having a wheel and rim inspection program is to reduce wheel failures that occur while in service. Reduce the potential for injuries and fatalities to service personnel working with or around wheels and rims and to reduce the operating cost of your equipment and reduce tire wear due to poor fitment as it relates to wheels and rims. For many years, little thought was given to the safety or durability of off-the-road wheels and rims. It would not be unusual for the original set of wheels the vehicle was shipped with to still be on the machine when it was sold or scrapped out for parts. Though the wheels are made of steel, the stresses pressures and operating demands placed on these older machines were not anywhere near what is commonly found with equipment today. Today's equipment has greater horsepower, torque, larger and heavier tires, and higher pressures. Older wheels left in service can be expected to have accumulated fatig metal fatigue, subsurface cracks developing, excessive wear, damaged and worn out componentry. In the past, little thought or concern was given to safety and serviceability of old wheels and rims. Investigation and reporting of incidents related to wheel problems were more local or regional. Accidents get, didn't get the attention that they get today. That is until the 90s when a few dramatic failures occurred resulting in loss of life and more attention began to be paid to these overlooked pressure vessel service personnel were exposed to on a daily basis. The Tire and Rim Association was established in 1903 to promote tire interchangeability and wheel and component standardization. Those standards were only guidelines and there were no means of enforcement. There were no standard designs where all manufacturers were producing the same designs and profiles. Steel grades and quality levels were not as high a priority then as compared to current wheels produced. In the 1980s, the major tire manufacturers, Goodyear and Firestone, had their own wheel manufacturing factories. Even during this time frame, there was a void of training and awareness. Wheels were assumed to be by users to be maintenance free. Maintenance was neglected and as a rule, no one was held responsible for ensuring wheels were inspected and proper service was done. In the 1970s, machines were getting larger, horsepower was increasing, radial tires were displacing bias tires on many machines which resulted in greater stresses being placed on the wheel designs of the time. For example, these, these comparisons of two popular Caterpillar loaders show how machines have evolved over the years with increases in horsepower and the demands of ever-increasing loading capabilities. Horsepower, digging, and load carrying capacity increased greatly. All the previous discussion leads us to this point, where we get into the essentials of why you should be proactive about inspecting the wheels and rims on the equipment in your fleet. The first sentence is a bit dramatic, but it gets right to the point. An inflated tire mounted on a wheel is a pressure vessel and is capable of releasing the stored potential energy inside with explosive force. Should the tire or the wheel become compromised by some unintentional damage, improper assembly, or wheel failure? A couple of things to remember is the bigger the tire and the wheel, the more stored potential energy. There is no such thing as a small accident when it comes to rim failure. I will explain further. We don't say these things to scare the listener, but to raise your awareness. Mounted tire wheel assemblies are very safe when the tires and the wheels are in good serviceable condition. It is only when they are worn or damaged beyond the point of being serviceable that they become a real danger. Tires and air pressures get most of the attention of service personnel. Wheels and rims traditionally do not, which is why we're going to educate you on how important they are too. Let me stop for a moment right here and restate and re-emphasize the statement I just made. Mounted tire wheel assemblies are very safe when. I'm going to lay out five conditions for when they are safe. This will become more relevant in the presentation when we look at real world examples of what has happened when tire wheel assemblies have failed. Mounted tire wheel assemblies are very safe when, number one, the tire is in good serviceable condition. Number two, the wheel and all of its components are in good serviceable condition. And number three, the tire and wheel assembly have been properly assembled 
so that it won't come apart during or after inflation. And number four, when safe tire inflation procedures are used. Number four means following the rules for safe inflation as prescribed by the Tire Industry Association training guides and videos, specific safety rules as prescribed by your company safety managers, or specific site rules that may be in place where you're doing your tire service work. Also, number five, safe work practices are followed. By that we mean that you never ever weld or torch on a wheel with a tire mounted on it. Deflate the tire wheel assemblies before removing them from equipment. You also don't ever beat on an inflated assembly with a hammer. There are all sorts of damage that you can do in addition to risking dislodging the lock ring from the lock ring groove under pressure, turning it into a projectile that can maim or even kill. Don't believe this has ever happened? It has, and the result was a multi-million dollar lawsuit. I have in my collection of incidents numerous examples that has happened overseas where the rules were broken and many lives were lost because the people weren't aware of these conditions or that just flat out ignored them. Here in North America, lives are valued much more highly and good qualified skilled labor to do tire service work is highly valued as well. If you have any one of these conditions that is not serviceable or not done right or not done following safe procedures, you put yourself in a risky position and you're rolling the dice. Err on the side of caution and do everything right. Remember, there are consequences for failing to follow these good rules. This presentation isn't about safely changing tires. It's about wheel inspection and repair. But these rules are very relevant to the real world examples I will be showing you upcoming in the presentation. You will see examples of wheels failing as a result of being unserviceable, not being properly assembled, and safety rules being intentionally ignored. These five conditions are completely relevant to what we are talking about here. Here's some more comparisons to remember. A 3,200 pound car traveling to 55 miles an hour will hit a brick wall with over 300,000 pounds of force. It only takes nine pounds of force to fracture a human bone. It only takes 300 pounds of force to fracture a human skull. Keep these numbers in mind. Here are a few examples of the hazard that is associated with mounted and inflated tire wheel assemblies used on heavy equipment. First example of common tire found on many kinds of earth moving construction and industrial equipment is the 26.5 by 25 tire. Inflated to 90 PSI, this tire wheel assembly has 373,650 foot-pounds of stored potential energy. That number may not mean much to most people. To make it understandable and translatable into a number that you can understand, we want to turn that force number to something that you can instantly, instantly relate to. There is enough stored energy in this tire and wheel assembly that if you could control the direction and release this force instantly like a cannon shot, it has the power equivalent to launching a 200 pound man 1,868 feet straight up. Remember I mentioned earlier that the larger the tire and the wheel, the more stored potential energy. Another common tire found in many kinds of earth moving construction and industrial equipment is the 2700 by 49 tire. Inflated to 102 PSI, this tire wheel assembly has 1,309,800 foot-pounds of stored potential energy. There's enough stored energy in this tire wheel assembly that if you again could control the direction and release this force instantly like a cannon shot, it has the power equivalent to launching a 200 pound man 6,549 feet straight up. A 3651 tire with 102 PSI has over 2,805,500 foot-pounds of stored potential energy capable of launching a 200 pound man 14,027 uh, feet straight up. We could go on with these examples but I think I've made my point. Now we will look at some real world examples of failures that, that release the stored energy of the tire and wheel assembly instantly. Here's an example of a small mining wheel that was severely fatigued, rusted, and corroded, but never inspected to assess its serviceability. 
The wheel gutter section sheared away under force and the tire was blown 50 feet from the machine. Remember the five conditions I mentioned previously. Which of these five conditions do you think were not met? If you guessed the wheel and components were not in good serviceable condition, you are right. Another very common tire size found across a wide range of off-the-road equipment is a 17.5 by 25 tire. In this example, the lock ring was not seated properly and when the tire and wheel assembly reached 50 PSI, the lock ring and flange were blown off the wheel by the stored potential energy. There was sufficient force exerted against the machine that the axle was literally ripped out of the machine. Which of the five conditions were not met in this example? If you guessed the tire and wheel assembly were not properly assembled, you would be right. Here is an actual example of a wheel failure that resulted in catastrophic failure and a loss of human life. In this example, the service personnel were working with a failing wheel at an above ground mine service area. The wheel had a defect that was set up to fail, but they didn't know it. They made the critical mistake of first not deflating the tire on the machine before they attempted to remove the wheel and tire assembly. When enough of the wheel studs were removed, the crack lurking beneath the surface of the failing lock ring groove sheared away under force. The servicemen were removing the last nuts when the split ring assembly failed. The entire wheel assembly was propelled off the axle, striking the two employees, resulting in fatal injuries to one and a broken arm and severe facial injuries to the second employee. Of the five conditions I talked about earlier, which one does this example fall under? Well, obviously the wheel was not in good serviceable condition. In addition, the workers were not following safe inflation and work procedures as well. This example shows you the results of a wheel failure at a steel mill involving a wheel mounted with a 45-65R45 tire. In this example, the wheel failed on the machine while the operator was working in the mill. While this incident is still being analyzed, there are some things that stand out right away to the trained eye. It may be hard to see on this video, but if you look closely, there appears to be significant metal fatigue present evidenced by the appearance of the metal fracture in the wheel's back section. A crack formed in the back section material that led to the tearing and shearing away of the metal in the back section area, leading to the wheel failing while the machine was operating. Fortunately, it was the wheel back section that sheared away and not the gutter side. The back section and the flange blew into the machine and not away from the machine. We know the tire on the machine was inflated to 110 PSI. At that pressure, and with the air volume capacity of a 45, 65, or 45 tire, it had over 2 million foot-pounds of stored energy contained within it. The sudden release of all that air pressure blowing into the machine in front of him no doubt gave the operator one of the greatest scares of his life. A post-incident survey of the rest of the 992 wheel loaders present at the mill revealed many of the wheel assemblies had Goodyear stamped parts on them. To the untrained person, that may not mean much, but to someone that knows, they would understand those parts are over 25 years old. Because Goodyear exited the wheel and rim business in 1986. The construction and mining wheel business was acquired from Goodyear by Dotson Wheel of Virginia. Dotson was later acquired by Titan Wheel in 1993. This incident resulted in the destruction of the wheel, a 4565 R45 tire that still had 90% tread left on it, total loss for those two items was about $30,000. Next came the expense of the lost machine production time and an emergency service call to the commercial tire dealer to get a replacement wheel and tire put back on the machine to get it back in service. So you add in all that labor for the work as well as the replacement cost of a new tire and wheel, it was an expensive day at the mill for an unplanned event. What is more revealing is that it was learned that the mill had been neglecting wheel maintenance and inspection, which would have caught this wheel defect before it resulted in a failure. Also in the incident, it was revealed that the mill didn't know what it didn't know. By that, I mean they weren't checking their wheels 
they weren't tracking them. They had no idea how old their wheels and parts were. The wheels were pretty much invisible to them. It was standard operating procedure to just put a tire on them, air them up, and run them. This incident revealed a risk they weren't paying attention to, and like the saying goes, those chickens came home to roost. Was this incident preventable? It absolutely was. Had they been doing a wheel inspection and repair program, this type of defect that led to this wheel failure would have been caught during a thorough wheel inspection. Of the five conditions I laid out for you earlier, this one again is obviously the wheels and components were not in good serviceable condition. The mill now has begun a wheel inspection and repair program that will catch these wheel problems before they become potential large accidents in the future. Another example of there are no small incidents when working with large tire and wheel assemblies. Failure to follow prescribed safety procedures when servicing large off-the-road tires and wheels on heavy equipment can lead to catastrophic accidents and loss of life. Here is another example uh, of the power of, of a wheel failure and the damage it can cause. This example has been widely used in many OSHA and MSHA safety briefings. This accident shows what can happen when you have a catastrophic failure of a large earth mover tire and wheel assembly and the damage of that sudden release of all that stored pressure can do. Pretty significant damage to the service truck, wouldn't you say? If you were the service technician, the supervisor, equipment manager, or the business owner, this would be a very expensive lesson for you to learn. Was this incident preventable? Sure it was. We will look at one preventative measure that can be taken to prevent this ty specific type of accident. Again, which of the five conditions were violated in this example? The right answer is multiple. The wheel was not in serviceable condition, improper assembly, and not following proper safe inflation procedures. One more final example with a 4057 tire. This incident is a matter of public record if you want to do some digging. This incident happened at Kennecott's Bingham Canyon Mine near Salt Lake City, Utah. The incident involved a misassembled tire and wheel assembly that was being prepared to be mounted on a Komatsu 830E haul truck at the mine shop. The tire and wheel assembly was fully assembled, standing upright in the tire hand, mounted on a large forklift. The tire and wheel assembly was inflated to 90 psi at the time of the incident. The group of men working on this assembly stopped work and went to break all together with the intention of completing the inflation when they returned. They went to the break area in the mine shop and while there a large explosion occurred. That explosion event was the result of the lock ring becoming disengaged from the lock ring groove on the rim base and being blown into the hydraulic mast of the tire hand. The 57 29 inch rim base and the back flange were propelled some 30 feet through the air into the wall opposite where the tire hand and forklift were positioned. You can see from the large hole in the wall it was a pretty forceful impact. Fortunately, the wall was constructed with steel rebar reinforcement. Because the steel rebar reinforcement, the 2,700 pound rim and flange were prevented from continuing on through the wall. On the opposite side of the wall was some electrical service equipment and a nitrogen storage tank. You can see the damage to the wall. The rim and components were severely damaged from the impact. The lock ring was bent out of shape and scrapped. The forklift hydraulic cylinder in the mast was impacted, bent, and taking it out of service. MSHA investigated and citations were issued to Kennecott and Komatsu equipment. Kennecott's citation was terminated, but Komatsu's was not. Komatsu was found not to have provided adequate mounting instructions that would have prevented this accident from occurring. This incident most definitely could have resulted in the potential loss of several lives if the men working on the tire and wheel assembly had not gone to break at their scheduled time. A fully inflated 4057 tire wheel assembly contains nearly 3.7 million foot-pounds of stored potential energy at 102 psi. A tremendous amount of power is packed into that assembly. Enough stored energy to launch our 200 pound man nearly three miles up. There are several lessons to be taken from this example. One important one is, is that you can't take proper assembly of a tire and wheel for granted. That lock ring and lock ring groove on the wheel base are what hold your inflated tire and wheel assembly together when the tire is inflated. 
We will get into this more further into the presentation. This is an excellent example of the five conditions. You have improper assembly as the main cause. You also have some pretty questionable inflation procedures that were being performed at the mine site. Handling fully inflated tire wheel assemblies in a tire hand with that much pressure inside the assembly is a very questionable practice. There are much safer ways of getting the job done and not risking life or damage to property when working with tire wheel assemblies this size. A preventative measure you can take. Special flanges and bead seat vans manufactured with Sherlock rings are a measure you can take to prevent an improperly assembled wheel from taking air pressure. As these illustrations show, the Sherlock ring prevents the flange or bead seat band from sealing off the O-ring when the wrong lock ring is being used, the lock ring is distorted, or if the lock ring is not in its proper position for flange or bead seat band to be pushed in place over the lock ring. This isn't a sales pitch about Sherlock, but we do want to make sure that you are aware of this design feature that brings an added measure of safety to ensuring that accidents like those previous examples don't have to happen if proper steps are taken. One added benefit of the Sherlock design is that when the tire and wheel assembly is fully inflated and the flange or bead seat band are in the proper position, it is almost impossible for the lock ring to become disengaged from the lock ring groove, causing the assembly to accidentally blow apart. Next up is, is a video demonstration with the rationale behind the invention of Sherlock and how it works by its inventor, Tom Smith. The power of an exploding wheel rim assembly can be devastating. Even in a small diameter wheel, such as the one pictured in this OSHA demonstration, the pressure against the rim flange can exceed 40,000 pounds, enough to cause serious injury or death if the rim explodes. The elimination of the potential risk of serious injury or death of workers servicing multi-piece rim assemblies had eluded engineers and safety experts for years until Titan Wheel International Director of Industrial and Construction Engineering, Tom Smith, developed the patented Sherlock safety system. The Sherlock safety system prevents the inflation of wheel assemblies if the entire lock ring is not in proper position. Tom Smith, inventor of the Sherlock safety system, explains, The concept is most easily uh, envisioned by, first of all, picturing a proper tire rim assembly as seen in this view. The lock ring is fully seated, the bead seat band is up in contact with the o-ring and the seal takes place. An improper assembly occurs when the lock ring is not properly positioned in the lock ring groove either due to uh, it's being bent or distorted or just simply not properly positioned. This view shows such a lock ring. It also shows the tire flange bead seat band back out of position ready for the inflation to take place. As the assembly is inflated, the tire bead and bead seat moves forward until the bead seat band butts the distorted or mismounted lock ring. Its movement then stops, and it stops in a position wherein the seal is not accomplished. The bead seat does not touch the rubber o-ring, therefore the assembly cannot take air, therefore the assembly is completely safe. As this patent application video demonstrates, the Sherlock system absolutely prevents inflation of the wheel assembly if the lock ring is misassembled, mismatched, or distorted in any way. And if a faulty wheel assembly can't be inflated, it can't explode. This table shows you that Sherlock flanges and bead seat bands are available in nearly every size. Sherlock components can be quickly interchanged with standard parts. Sherlock flanges and bead seat bands are shipped standard equipment on many Caterpillar machines. This design feature has found its way outside these sizes and has been adapted to many other types and sizes of heavy duty and high pressure wheels using a variety of equipment. Bad maintenance practices and failure to follow safety rules can lead to severe damage and loss of life. Never ever weld a torch on a wheel or a rim that has a tire mounted on it. In fact, leave wheel and rim maintenance to the experts to make sure that your wheel, those wheels and rims are safe. 
Here is an example of a maintenance person being killed as a result of welding and torching on a wheel and tire assembly on a vehicle. This video is a demonstration by Standards Testing's labs to show the pressures, the forces, and the temperatures that can build up internally in an inflated tire wheel assembly as a result of welding on the wheel. Don't ever do it. Don't ever weld or torch on a wheel with a tire mounted on it. Now watch how rapidly the temperature rises and how quickly the pressure rises until this tire finally explodes. These are the reasons why you would never weld or torch on a wheel or rim with a tire on it. Number one, it violates OSHA regulations. Number two, the wheel and rim servicing needs to be done by the experts that know how to do it properly. That means leave it up to the certified wheel service company or the factory to get it done right. Number three, you can start the process of tire pyrolysis producing flammable gases within the tire resulting from the tire beginning to break down internally and resulting in extreme heat and pressure until it finally explodes. Bridgestone Tires, Jack Dutcher did an excellent video that talks about this whole issue and goes into greater depth and shows numerous examples of what has happened. It can be found on YouTube. Search for Wheels of Fire training video and you should find it. Here's another example of tire service personnel that were not using proper safety procedures or equipment. A mistake they won't soon forget. To this point, we have looked at the issue of wheel inspection, who is responsible, why it is important for the safety of your personnel and safe operation of your equipment, the hazards involved, and the potential forces contained in tire wheel assemblies. We showed you only a few real-world examples of what has and what can happen. So what is the next step if you are concerned about getting a wheel inspection program started in your facility?